We're always in our clubhouse getting high. Superfuckers! Everybody wishes we would die. Superfuckers! Here we come! Like a bomb! Everybody fucking run and hide! Alright, so I was in a Skype call with a friend the other day. And we, he was just playing Dark Souls, and I was just chatting with him. And I mentioned, oh, hey, Some Call Me Johnny is on the podcast. But instead of saying Some Call Me Johnny, I instead said Some Call Me Daddy. Oh, I haven't been called that in centuries. And yes, I said centuries. I don't want nothing to do with this podcast anymore. Thank you very much. Fucking Nolan on Discord, even though we're on Skype conversation. Make up your mind already. When you're ready, I'll be in my trailer. Is he coming back? Wait, he has a trailer? <laughs> Don't tell anybody. I've been here for weeks. <laughs> he has nowhere else to go. <laughs> oh. <laughs> the house was the front. Everybody fucking run and hide. Hey, it's the pizza. No, it's the Rebel Taxi Pizza Party <laughs> Podcast. <laughs> Who are you people? I'm Pan Pizza. I ruined the podcast and we haven't even started yet. That's not your name. Oh. My name is Nolan, and I ruined everything. Yay. Oh, hey, it's me, Jim. It's uh, me, Stev. And... We have a guest. Hey, greetings, ladies and gentlemen. It's me. Some call me Johnny of... Some call me Johnny. That You guys can call me John. That's no problem. Yeah. I don't care. Yes. Feel free to interject any time you want. Some of us call you Daddy. Yeah. <laughs> what the... <laughs> hey, tonight? Tonight. Oh, no. <laughs> what have I done? <laughs> How's it going, guys? Yeah. So <laughs> going explain good. who you are and what you do exactly. You know, I'm still trying to figure out the answer to that myself. Mm-hmm. But what I've got so far, uh, heavily in debt college student. Oh. Uh, animator who rarely animates. Mm-hmm. I make video game reviews. I do Let's Plays. I do commentaries that I pretend that are not Let's Plays. And uh, that's about it. And I'm pretty happy with myself. Mm-hmm. How about you guys? What do you do? Uh, you know stuff. I'm kind of, I'm kind of in a rut. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I go to school. I, I work work at fast food. Life is great. <sighs> Kill me. I have acid reflux, so, you know, I got to go to the doctor re- Thursday. Oh, I'm sorry. Take a breath test. You should get the, some, some Tums. Oh, yeah. For the first two of those, you started sounding like me. And then you went, let's play. <laughs> Johnny, for uh, for anyone who hasn't watched your videos, which video would you recommend them watching of yours? <sighs> Let's get one thing straight. If you're not a fan of Sonic the Hedgehog of any sense, don't bother. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Let's put it this way. The, like, my uh, people, uh, so my buddy Jason, shout out to him. Uh, he showed me, like, my 10 most popular videos, all Sonic. And <laughs> they're, not my, they're not my very nice Sonic videos because... I usually have nothing nice to say about the blue blur in his modern days. And uh, some people might call me a nostalgia fanboy. I just like good games. So sue me. Yeah. But so no, I, don't, I don't think anyone disagrees with with that with Sonic. Uh, lately, no, I some no. people. There's people you could. OK, Sonic 06 is like one of the most hated games known to man. But there's defenders. Yeah. <laughs> but if you ask, like, even if you asked. A normal person who who's not super like cares about every Sonic game. If they pick up a Sonic game or look at it, I usually hear the major complaint is why isn't this like the old uh, the you know the Genesis games or something like that. Mm-hmm. So I think it's pretty. I think it's actually most people feel that way. Majority does. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, mo- most often or not, if you if you know who I am, it's most likely you were introduced to my Sonic videos because those are some of my most popular videos. I'm very appreciative of that. I'm very, I'm very happy of uh, yeah. how well they achieved. And but other than that, I, I review all other stuff. I'm a hu- I got a huge heart on for Metroid, mm-hmm. uh, uh, Mario, and Final Fantasy, all, all those kind of games. But yeah, you no. Know, Every time I talk about Sonic, I just something triggers inside me. Like, <laughs> no, like, I don't blame leave. you. I mean, uh, I'm a huge Sonic fan too, and like I, I don't, haven't mentioned before, but I'm a huge fan of your stuff too. And one of my favorite videos of yours is the Sonic 06 review. Uh, but I'm also, so sorry. <laughs> but the Metal Gear series has also been a, a big, just like yes. <laughs> uh, that just, I love Metal Gear too so much. Mm-hmm. Uh, makes me happy to hear that. Even the Acid series, because I, I, I haven't really, played Acid. Oh, well, you're not really missing much. Yeah. Um, I did play Portable Ops, though, and according to one of my friends, I played it in the worst way possible by leaving the original controller scheme in. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, have you ever played a uh, P- 
PSP game where you need three thumbs because that game is it. <laughs> <laughs> Not quite. Maybe Metroid Prime Hunters it was somewhere in the, along the line because I think you got to like use a touch screen to oh. go into morph ball mode or something like that. But no. Oh, yeah. Speaking of Metroid, um, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Oh, you're talking about Federation Force? Yes. <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 it's really bad that I could assume just immediately what you're talking about just with that tone. Uh, hmm. I did play it at this past PAX East and, you know, mechanically it's it's Metroid Prime, which I'm happy about. It's just everything else I just not a fan of. I don't like the graphics. I don't like the, just anything else just, and uh, whatever. The game is coming out in August <laughs> and that's around the 30th anniversary of Metroid. And I was like, fuck me. This is the f- anniversary game. <laughs> I, I, actually, I should have asked you guys. Do you, are you guys PG rated R? <laughs> and rated R. We can say whatever the hell we want here. Yeah, yeah. I think we're we're unrated in most foreign territory. I was gonna say because if you're PG, you're not rated R. <laughs> and uh, I don't. I'm not sorry. Yeah. Do, say whatever you want. We don't care. <laughs> okay, that's absolutely fine. Yeah. No, but, no, dude. I, I yeah. do appreciate you watching my channel, dude. I, it really means a lot to me. Speaking yeah, of I, a Sonic, a Sonic the Hedgehog, like Sonic fans, yeah, you're right. They are pretty. <laughs> clean because a while back i did make fun of sonic underground remember that cartoon yeah. rarely yeah the what? one where uh they get rid of tails and sonic has a brother and sister who and they're all voiced by julia all White. voiced by julia what exactly i was about to say that myself <laughs> it's really sad they play they they got one guy to voice his siblings like all three of his all two of his siblings that's really sad i'm glad i would never do that but there, i don't know there are people in the comments who are like how dare you say that sonic underground is bad this is <laughs> And they would just go on these long ass like rants, but at the very end they would say, "I don't care if you don't like it, but really, you shouldn't put this on here at all." <laughs> those are those are my favorite comments. One rant, but I don't care if you feel this way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but no. But also, my favorite thing is like, do you think there are fans who defend the Eddie LeBron film? Oh no! You know, to his credit. He At tried. least he did it. At least he tried. Yeah. I'll give him that much. Yeah, but. I guess. Nostalgia Critic grew his hair for that movie. <laughs> <laughs> he did. Not, not even Sonic wanted anything to do with that movie. Because, you know, I haven't seen that since, like, it was initially uploaded. And one of the biggest special effect failures that I always remember right off the top of my head is that at one point, oh, yeah. he jumps out of the aspect ratio. Yes, he like, does. He jumps, I remember, he jumps yeah, past I, the letterbox. That's and what I was, I was like, thinking. Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> I I remember me and Pan were in a call once and I was watching it and I was like, Pan, Pan, he jumped out of the fucking aspect ratio and I was screaming yeah. and Pan was just like, what? It's so cheap. Like he jumps out of the black bars onto the screen. And then my favorite thing is that it's made by supposed Sonic fans, but then Knuckles shows up and he has fucking fingers. Oh, fingers the enchilada. Hell yeah. <laughs> that's a fan character. Well, imagine walking around with boxing gloves all day. Like, really? That's not very functional. Yeah, in the com- in the comics, he has, like, two fingers and, like, a thumb, and it looks really weird. And I'm just like, well, Ken Fingers, you bastard. Everything in the Sonic comics look weird. They do. Oops. This is this the Sonic Podcast 2.0. I yeah. can't believe we did this. The That's last time we had a special fun. guest, it was I Hate Everything, and we ended up talking about Sonic again. Oh, oh so this is the third time. I'm telling you, dude, there's just something that just brings out, for good or ill, the ranty qualities of a human being when Sonic is on the topic. Because, yeah. And this was totally out of left field. Again, I'm bringing up PAX C. So you, you guys know Chuck Conroy? Oh, yeah. He follows me. Yeah, everyone knows the guy is like huge Nintendo guy. He's a lovely guy. And we're talking to each other uh, like the day before the, the beginning of the expo. And he brings up Sonic out of nowhere. Mm-hmm. And that leads into a 40 minute tangent. <laughs> where it's oh, like, man. you know, I had to catch my cab like 20 minutes ago, but it's okay. I want to keep talking Sonic too. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is more important. I'm going to talk about Sonic. <laughs> you, you can say whatever you want about Side the Hedgehog as long as you admit the best character is Big the Cat. Uh oh. Uh, oh, God. Supposed- I like a cat, but it ain't big. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, supposedly Big um, Fishing Adventure 3 has a big clue to the 25th anniversary game. I'm just like, just tell us already. Wait, they're making another I, Big the Cat game? It was a joke. Um, for at the uh, SXSW panel, um, Aaron Weber like spilled all of his memes onto the fucking floor. <laughs> and uh, it, that panel, that panel was funny, but it was it, they didn't just announce, hey, we're having a pa- we're having a 25th anniversary party in July. And we're going to announce the game there. 
And then they released a fake fan game that was like a visual novel called Big Fishing Adventure 3. And it's glorious. Yeah. And if um, I, I, just a little tidbit, because I don't think I was really clear on this. If you go back to that game and you look at the quality assurance testers, I'm one of them. But I went under an alias. <laughs> it was Frankie Serrano. That's myself. No fucking way. And you could thank uh, Skylar King. Uh, he, he, I think he helped develop or at least get some insight in the game. And he asks, we need, we need you guys for quality assurance. And by that, I mean, can I put your name on this credits list? And I was like, <laughs> yeah. I was like, yeah, but we want to use aliases. And I was like, okay. That I'm is just fucking amazing. Frankie Serrano. I'll just put Frankie Serrano. And there it is. It's, <laughs> it's right there. Frankie Serrano. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a let's play joke. Like, long story. <laughs> <laughs> but, oh, um, yeah. Um, if I could d- be indulgent again real quick. Thank you for playing Sly Cooper. Criminally underrated. Nobody oh, likes it except well, I think me. My, I thank my brother for that one because he uh, he absolutely adored the series. He grew up more with the PlayStation Two platformers than I did because I kind of peaked at Crash Bandicoot. Mm-hmm. And uh, after CTR, I I just sort of stopped. So, you know, I played Sonic Adventure and Sonic Adventure Two, obviously, and later Sonic Heroes. But PlayStation Two platformers, I was kind of very on and off with. And only now, like during the PS3, PS4 remastering era. Do I finally sit down and take the time to play them? And Sly Cooper is one of those I really want to delve into, but not now. Did, did anything ever come from that movie? Like well, I remember a trailer being announced like two years ago. It's, Nothing it's happened. Come out. Well, it's by the same people who did Ratchet and Clank, and it it's has it just has a date a uh, year, which isn't a real release date of this year. But I don't know if it'll come out because Ratchet and Clank isn't doing that well. Yeah, so I, don't, I hear critically it wasn't received well it was no okay it was no well, okay movie. i think the problem with ratchet and clank was it's like i've never played a ratchet and clank game i don't know much about the games and so i didn't really like the movie but i noticed everyone who was more uh who knew the characters before liked it more but i don't think that's really a good idea for a, a movie that's supposed to you know take it to the next level because if i can't get into it without having played the game that's not really a good idea for a movie you know, yeah, in general, yeah. but I, I I know it's the same people, but I mean it's not doing horribly. So maybe they'll put it out in September or just keep pushing it. They have a better just life as a DVD Blu-ray. Um, yeah, probably. I actually sorry. Um, real quick, I did have an answer as to what happened. There was an interview with the director Kevin Monroe, and they were like, "So is the Sly Cooper ha- movie happening?" And Kevin Monroe's like, "It hasn't even started production. I haven't got really." Yeah, yeah, I, yeah he, no. he, he uh, said I haven't gotten the call yet, and when I get the call, we'll start on it. So that 2016 was just a big fat lie. Hmm. Well, because no. like, it wasn't actually a teaser trailer; it was a proof of concept mm-hmm. uh, oh, released to the public to see what people's reactions were. So, do you have any information, stuff? I don't have any information besides a podcast I listened to from the original voice actor of Sly being not super salty. Like he was like, eh, it sucks that I'm not the voice for the movie, but if the movie does well, there's a TV show. They're going to get me. They're not going to get this other guy. He's popular. <laughs> why, why, wouldn't they, why wouldn't they have him if it's done by the same people did Ratchet and Clank because that used all, for the most part, pretty much people from the video game. They did the same for Sly Cooper, except for Sly, which they replaced with the voice of Cheetor from Beast Wars. <laughs> I guess he has an in with uh, uh, mainframe entertainment. I mean, well, that's they, true. They also might be waiting for – I know a lot of people in the film industry are – and even I've heard – this is a lot of rumor and hearsay, but I've heard a lot of rumors that like Nintendo especially is looking to see how Angry Birds and Warcraft does before they announce anything. I, lo- I love how you ignore Ratchet and Clank. Like, eh, they don't care. Yeah. Well, Ratchet and Clank wasn't. I mean, unless it was a huge hit, they weren't really looking at that one to be the mm-hmm. thing that's going to change things. But Warcraft has a lot of emphasis around it. Of like, if it's a huge hit, I think you know by August you'll hear of five video game movies being uh, in going into production. Yeah, or in development or something. You like also that. have to compare the fact that Ratchet and Clank was a series of games that was mostly – the popularity has peaked a couple of years ago versus Warcraft and Angry Birds. Well, Angry Birds' popularity has kind of pop- peaked as well, but they're still a little bit more relevant and bigger of franchises than Ratchet well, and Clank. Well, I've and, heard um, the, yeah, the new Ratchet and Clank game actually sold really well, but not the movie. Okay, P here is going to try to hit on that target with the Devastator, the rocket launcher designed for Ratchet and Clank. The Devastator, one of 36 weapons and gadgets not fit for this world. 
Well, they didn't have as much money behind the movie. Really, the movie was like twenty million, wasn't it? Yeah. Well, here's Something the thing: like that. that the <laughs> the movie was basically cutscenes from the new game extended. No, or the other way around. The other way around. The game was built around the cutscenes. I mean, the movie. Well, hmm. uh, I have a, as someone who hasn't seen the movie myself, I always uh, one similar critique I've heard about the Ratchet and Clank movie was that it was a movie that was looking for a video game. Yeah. Just yeah, that, that's that's a fair criticism. Like I was watching Angry Joe's uh, review of it, and he was saying the movie is just the game; it's just the cutscenes from the game. You're just you're just playing the non-interactive version of the game with the movie. Yeah. Mm. And, and, I, and I'm kind of scared because, like, if that's what they were planning on doing with the Sony movies, well, you know, you have Ratchet Clank, then Sly Cooper, it I'm might end up it. being the same. And yeah, it's just like. Uh, I don't like I don't like that direction. I don't I don't think I'm a fan. I mean, imagine if like the Warcraft movies just cut scenes from the actual game itself. Wouldn't that be fucked up? I don't. I, just you know, it's, it's the funny scenes. thing is that I'm I'm glad we now live in an era where video game movies are given the same sort of creative touch as say something from DreamWorks or Pixar, mm-hmm. and not you know under Yui Bowl's shit list for <laughs> 2013. Yeah. Yeah. But at the same time, now the issue comes with giving these video game movies sustenance and not just, again, to reflect back on criticisms, a video a movie that's looking for a video game, you know, because yeah. we don't need a Warcraft movie where a subplot is we need to go hunt down 20 bear asses. And then like <laughs> the next cut is, OK, we have the 20 bear asses. And it's like, you get it? You get it? It's like, no, we don't get it, actually. I'm, I'm general audience, and I'm confused as shit. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what makes the game really disjointed for Ratchet and Clank is that um, there's a point where Ratchet and Clank are separated, but because of how the gameplay works, they can't be when you're playing them. So there's a part where, like, Clank is stuck in the office, and Ratchet's got to go do some field work, and then they're, they're together again for the gameplay, uh, you know, just like, you know, Clank runs up. It's like, hey, I'm back. And then, like, immediately they go back to one of the nice little Pixar looking k- cutscenes. And it's like, man, I've been stuck here all day. And it's like, no, you you haven't. <laughs> like, that's the thing that happens. Yeah. But th- yeah, but that's like how like the movie was written first. And then the game was like kind of developed around that. So it's like because if the game was developed first, then that mo- the movie wouldn't have been written that way. Because also the movie was going to have Ratchet's father written into the script. With King first, yeah, we sh- that that's really that that is an interesting topic, but we don't know anything about it. So I guess Egg. The, I guess the Ratchet and Clank game is one of the best uh, video games based on a movie ever made since basically uh, since Street Fighter the movie the game. <laughs> I don't know Super Mario man. I still got a soft spot for the '94 Street Fighter film, if only because of Raul Julia as Bison. Oh yeah, he hams it up perfectly. No, no, but like that, there was a line that I think is unironically so good from that movie. I'm sorry, I don't remember any of it. You don't remember? For you, the day Bison graced your village was the most important day of your life. But for me, it was Tuesday. Fuck, that is such a good line. <laughs> and also the line when he's about to kill Guile, he just says, For I beheld Satan as he fell from <laughs> heaven like lightning. You know, to me, it was the there was the hover pod that w- that was controlled with the joystick. So that's yeah. that's absolutely. Oh yeah, the fine. joystick that was just a fight stick. Yeah, <laughs> it even has like the uh, map from the Street Fighter uh, character select screen. Zero latency. Yeah, there's a lot of weird little references in the background, like early on, and uh, there's like that statue you see in Saget's stage. In um, yeah, it is coin operated though, so you got to put twenty five cents in every hour. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but does anyone remember um, Street Fighter: The Legend of Chun Li, the other Street Fighter movie that came out around the same time as Dragon Ball Evolution? I have uh-huh. avoided that movie because uh-huh. I've heard nothing but terrible things. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it kind of just didn't that come out in like April. Around them, yeah, April around there. Like I, I remember the same year of, as Dragon Ball Evolution, because like, wow, two fandoms get screwed over. But um, <laughs> speaking of Dragon Ball Evolution, we have some news. Oh yes, I know about this. <laughs> okay, you want to get into the news? Yeah, <laughs> let's do it. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Strong, fearless. Not bad. Just an ordinary kid fulfilling his destiny to save the world. Meet Goku. Ah! It's one student who's becoming the master. Dragon Ball Evolution. 
Okay, so news. The writer of Dragon Ball Evolution, the live-action Dragon Ball movie, has apologized. He writes, Dragon Ball Evolution marked a very painful, creative point in my life. To have something with my name on it as a writer to be so globally reviled is just gut-wrenching. To receive hate mail from all over the world is heartbreaking. I spent so many years trying to deflect the blame, but in the end of the day, it all comes down to the written words on the page and I take full responsibility for what was such a disappointment to many fans. I did the best I could, but at the end of the day, I dropped the Dragon Ball. <laughs> oh, I love that line. That end line is the best. I dropped the Oh my god. Wow. And that's why he's a Hollywood writer. <laughs> Uh, what's he written now? Was has he done something after that? I forget. Uh, one of his other movies was "A Good Day to Be Black and Sexy," I believe. That was the title of the movie. Is that a porno movie? Or is that a know. is that a is that a Mr. Popo spinoff? Oh, I hope so. <laughs> Popo Evolution. Ben Ramsey. Um, basically nothing. Yeah, I think this was his only film. Jesus. <laughs> Imagine making only one film and it's this film. Imagine how you would feel knowing all these people hate you. <laughs> I, I, honest, I honestly can kind of relate, even though that ending line is just like, come on, dude. That was so tasteless. <laughs> well, apparently, he, he did. His other thing was the Mark Wahlberg movie from 1997, the big hit. That was it. That's well, all he said. Was it a big hit? Um, It, it was a sizable modest hit but i don't think it was a big hit maybe he'll write a, an apology letter about that and say i guess it really wasn't a big hit <laughs> <laughs> it kind of makes me think that the guy at the end really doesn't give a shit he goes on to say that um he, but he understands why fans would be mad because he he had he says he had no heart or soul put into it and he just did it for just to take the assignment and get the paycheck i feel like he did this for publicity I mean, he's, he, he's directed stuff, he's written a few things, but nothing that, like, anyone probably remembers. Maybe he can do the Naruto movie. It would only, really, in my opinion, it would only get publicity in the eyes of, you know, rev reviled Dragon Ball fans. Because, you know, I long forgot about Dragon Ball Evolution at this point. Uh, yeah. you, you go to any regular average Joe and they go, who? What? Yeah. What's a Dragon Ball? Who's Dragon <laughs> Balls? No, come on. Yeah, I, People know what Dragon Ball is. Well... People I'm still waiting college. for I'm still waiting for M. Night Shyamalan to apologize for Last Airbender TBH. Has he? No, I want I want him to do an airbender pun now though. I mean I'm, <laughs> he didn't make a I guess you could say that all along I was the Fire Nation. <laughs> and then no, and then and then he does some like Tai Chi move and then he just like poses and then he walks off stage in the pose. <laughs> I, I was hoping for a mic drop. Oh, <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if in a movie he made because after the visit, studios are listening to him again. So I, I wouldn't be surprised if he makes like a small horror movie and there's an offhand Airbender reference. <laughs> so I bet he would do that. Isn't the guy kind of egotistical or? Um, I've heard he I I from what I read it like he was getting pretty egotistical, but he also like is pretty self-deprecating. Did you ever hear about the documentary? He he made about him. He paid for it to be made about himself for the visit. Oh yeah, or not the visit. Um, the Late village. The oh no, no, it was for the village. And what he did was, um, they made this thing about how uh, M Night Shyamalan was connected to all these like dark magic and hidden forces and stuff. And they made it as like a War of the Worlds type thing, like it was a joke. But people in the media, for whatever reason, didn't think it was a joke and got really upset with him about it and then so when it was released people looked at it as like his first big um disappointment <laughs> that he had funded this movie about like how he had almost died and had could connect to spirits and each of the movies is based on some life experience of his it's, so it's a really weird really do dark, dark magic mm -hmm. no he can't he can't do dark magic Shit. i mean maybe he can i don't know I saw that, after that would be a Shyamalan that's... twist the, <laughs> i i actually can't do magic oh there's that mic drop I mean, I saw After Earth. That was kind of like terrible dark magic I witnessed. <laughs> I was in the uh, Comic-Con panel for After Earth. Before the Adventure Time panel, there was this. And a lot of people were dressed up and 
Avatar and I think Korra was coming out that year. So a lot of people were dressed as Korra and classic Avatar. Oh, no. And nobody heard of this movie called After Earth. So, it, oh, my God, this panel just opened up with like a video on the screen showing like behind the scenes footage, no actual movie footage of Jaden Smith and Will Smith and such. And then you just hear the director talking and then eventually it pop, they show the director on screen and it's M. Night Shyamalan and the whole Comic-Con audience starts laughing. Oh. <laughs> oh. Did he show up on stage? No, sadly Not anymore. no. It was just the writers. He, he was probably like behind the stage and he goes, I'm not going out, guys. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you got to go out there. No, 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 no. I don't. I don't. I don't. They go, she's dressed up as Cora. Take me back. Take me like, back. Look, listen, my sixth sense is tingling. All right. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Did you see that documentary? The twist to the twist is that I'm twisted with dark magic. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> but during the panel, like, um, it was just the writers talking. And one of the writers was saying, yeah, we actually have this entire universe planned out for multiple movies and spinoffs and books and such. So we have it all planned out, unlike that other show, Lost, <coughs> which yeah, good luck with that. Now none of that's ever gonna happen. What? That's a weird. <laughs> Let's take down Lost. Yeah. Look, I think Lost. <laughs> oh. Lost was dead for like two years by then. I guess they were still mad. We were yeah, all still was, mad. Yeah, it'd be more topical to make fun of Breaking Bad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, well, that had answers. I want to get super obscure, Sleepy Hollow. I'm still mm. salty about that. Is that the one with uh, Johnny Depp? <laughs> no, it's Tom Meeson and Nicole Bihari. It's a show on Fox, oh, and, okay. and it's going to get canceled, I'm 100% sure, and it oh. died in the most painful, awful death possible. Are you I, on Fox? Yeah, I was on Fox, and I want to die. Just please kill me. M. Night Shyamalan, like, uh, when you guys went to see movies a few years ago and they played the trailer to the movie Devil, did this ever happen to you where, like, they're just playing the trailer and the moment M. Night Shyamalan's name comes up, everyone in the audience starts laughing? Yeah, that did happen. Yeah. Okay, because every time I went to the movies, like, that would always happen. The trailer would play and the moment Shyamalan's name popped up, people started laughing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, well, I th the craziest thing about Av uh, Last Airbender is so many people who don't even like avatar we're like no but fuck that guy like <laughs> like universally culture as a whole went no nah, this he went too far this time yeah. that's that's not cool i think people were still sore over the happening because people are still not sure whether or not that film was played straight or a parody what? yeah no. i've heard that people have said it's a parody before no. i've never seen see the visit it was okay you know it was a little better but he's still like he has just one gimmick <laughs> Yeah, oh, which is and like this whole it, mystery, and then at the end, you're like, "Oh, what? Oh, wow, I didn't get." The, but you know what? I, I, we, I, I, I don't mean to come off as demeaning because I will still defend Unbreakable. That's <laughs> my favorite Shyamalan film. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. But yeah, I, I completely agree. I, what, I don't want to say one trick pony, but one it's trick pony. Sort of, yeah. Well, it's like if you use the same exact plot device every time. I mean, it's like in Sixth Sense and Unbreakable. Those are two that I still consider pretty good. But then when you get to like, by the time he did it in the visit, I was like, he's not going to do that. Come on. This is his comeback movie. And I was like, oh, shit. I don't think he knows how not, not to do that. Like he's, <laughs> He can't turn off. Like that's like, that's just how we learned how to ride a bike. So now he's riding his bike, you know, with, you know, a weird like side saddle. And everyone's like, Shyamalan, how are you doing this? And he's like, I don't know. It works for me. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, but it gets me money. <laughs> You're going to buy a ticket anyway. He actually used his uh, how much he got paid for After Earth to pay for the the visit. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah, That's I mean, one way to spend money. And then he made like a ton because it was an independent uh, movie. Oh, yeah. Then he's really in the dough at yeah. that point. Yeah. Smart well, man. It kind of reminds me a little bit of uh, what's the guy who did the uh, Spy Kids oh, series Robert Rodriguez. movies? Rodriguez. Yeah, yeah, like doesn't he like? There was a point where he did a, a Spy Kids movie just to fund the next movie that he wanted to do on his own. <laughs> I can see why. You, did he I, use Spy Kids 3D to fund Shark Boy and Lava Girl? Uh oh, oh no! <laughs> uh, oh, wasn't Shark Boy and Lava Girls weird? Because apparently he shot that during the day and Sin City at night. And I was like, wow, that must have been. A Weird time on that studio. <laughs> Get the names mixed Robert up. Rodriguez ruined my dream journal. <laughs> Why is there blood on this green screen? 
Oh, uh, so that's why there was the yellow bastard Easter egg in Shark Boy and Lava Girl. <laughs> it's like, why is this guy in the film? With the young Taylor Lautner as Shark Boy. <laughs> oh, yeah. And he raps in it, doesn't he? He does like a good night rap. He raps? No, he yeah. sings really badly. I, mean, I almost bought Shark Boy and Lava Girl. There was a used bookstore, and I was buying a ton of awful Air- Friedberg and Seltzer movies mm-hmm. to stream. And like, uh, I could get Shark Boy and Lava Girl because why? Why can I not get Shark Boy and Lava Girl? And the lady goes, "I'm sorry, I thought we had Shark Boy and Lava Girl, but we did not." And I'm like, "Is this a sign? Is is this is this is this God trying to intervene?" <laughs> <laughs> hey, I ain't judging. I saw Spy Kids 3D in theaters. Uh, I saw Spy Kids 3D at a school screening of it, like it was a fundraiser or something. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I'm like, man, this movie's dumb. I've like <laughs> never, I've never seen a Spy Kids, but I always respected how because the reason it's a franchise is because when he made the second one, they were like, you can have double the budget, and he was like, no, I want the same budget, so that way. Like each of them financially, he made it so he could keep making them <laughs> so that they were never too expensive. Like that was like how he got them made. I always thought that was kind of smart. Yeah, the production values. That when, yeah, you're right about that. I think about the production values of all three of the film. Well, I don't remember if there were three or four films, but four. They, they all, oh, yeah, four. I didn't even know there was a fourth one. Uh, they all had the same sort of production values, the same sort of crappy CGI and all yeah. that. But hey, whatever. The kids still liked it. That's why I mean, there's. There's four films. Yeah, but on one hand, we could have had a big budget Spy Kids movie. Yeah. I mean, I, that might have been smarter in the long run because what the more money you get involved, the more people want to have their say. And it might, or maybe it would have been better. I don't know. Hmm. You know. But um, the third one that took place in a video game, like there were some moments that actually looked very competent with the CGI and other moments straight up look like a Nintendo 64. <laughs> it was awful. But I, I automatically liked the movie because it was in 3D. And at the time of uh, the 3D gimmick didn't come crashing back after Avatar. You know, this was pre-Avatar. No one was doing 3D oh, except yeah. for this movie. So, you know, that was a, a good gimmick. No, no, it wasn't. Hey, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't know. And then Spy Kids 4 upped the ante. We have 3D and smell of vision Oh, what yeah. A bi- what a bitch. And Joe McHale. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I remember that ad. There was like, we have 3D smell of vision and Joel McHale. And kids love Joel. And McHale. Jessica Alba f- being a spy while pregnant. Yeah. There's a video on YouTube of her being a spy while pregnant. It has like over a million views. And I'm thinking it's just a bunch of people with a weird pregnancy fetish that watch that, those videos. Anyway, so <laughs> going back to uh, <laughs> Shark Boy okay. and Lava Girl, like Taylor Lautner. I just remember that one movie that he was in, that action movie, Abducted. You know, the oh, one yes. Movie? Okay. Yeah, I do. Here's the, here's the, the setup for this movie. Like his friend just invites him over and just says, "Hey, if you put your uh, baby pictures in here, it'll show what a baby looks like in uh 20 years from now." And here's some missing kids. So let's get this missing kid photo and put it in this website, and then <laughs> it it estimates what this baby will look like in 20 years or so. And it's a picture of Taylor Lautner, and he realizes, "Wait a minute." I'm a missing child. <laughs> wow. And his parents Jesus. were like spies or something. That's very, <laughs> I don't know. I know they, they actually thought for a while that was going to be a big hit and that was going to launch him as an action star. Like there was a real feeling like this is going to be big and it like did not work out. And what movie was this? Abducted. Abducted. Yeah. Oh, hey, geez. Don't, don't worry. He still has a, a role in all of Adam Sandler's films. Yeah, that seems to be what happened to him. Like, he didn't get to do the Kristen Stewart art movie thing, and I don't really know what Robert Pattinson does, but he just hangs out at Adam Sandler's house, I guess. Yeah, if you need job security as an actor, just uh, hang out with Adam Sandler. He'll put you in something. Yeah, he'll he'll, one of his many Netflix things now. Yeah, (laughs) what a great... Well, I mean, if if you're white, if you're white... Taylor Lautner's... Then you'll be safe. uh, Native American, I believe... Then what's he doing with Adam Sandler after that Netflix movie came out? Oh, no. He needs money, okay? He he ain't going back to Robert Rodriguez, that's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Those tw- Twilight royalties aren't coming in like they used to, man. No. It, it's over. The Twilight train just fell through. I'm actually shocked sure there's not, like, a little spinoff movie coming out. Because, like, it seemed like Harry Potter, Star Wars, 
Um, it just seems like there's just a bunch of these like little like side stories that just happen to be in the universe. And no, Stev, like, don't don't give them any ideas. Gonna actually, actually, there was um, Stephanie Meyer was writing novella novella for uh, Twilight, and I think it was um, the series from Edwards I, um, Edwards' point of view. Mm-hmm. And she stopped um, writing it because it leaked online, and she was upset. Do oh, no. do 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 do. In this ordinary home, no one would ever guess that mom and dad are spies. My parents can't be spies. They're not cool enough. Spy Kids, ready PG. Now in theaters everywhere. Next news. So DreamWorks Animation, they've been producing animation independently and they self-sustain themselves, you know, for a while now. But Oops. now... Universal has bought out DreamWorks Animation for $3.8 billion. So, and you know the other part of this is the guy who runs Illumination is now going to be like a, uh, he's going to be like the John Lasseter for how John Lasseter runs D- Disney Animation and Pixar. And this guy, the guy who runs Illumination is going to run Illumination and DreamWorks at the same time. So oh, no. Shrek 5 confirmed? Oh no! Um, I you know honestly, I would not be surprised if Shrek Five gets announced soon. For every we- clearly a sellout kind of movie like Home, DreamWorks does like their lesser inspired movies. They do have like all these weird, more ambitious ones like uh, How to Train Your Dragon and Rise of the Guardians. But I'm afraid we're not going to get as many of those as before. Well, How to Train Your Dragon Three is they've already announced that. Mm-hmm. And uh, interestingly enough, each How to Train Your Dragon movie got released by a different studio hmm. because they've been sold and bought. Just they've had so many different distribution huh. deals. Yeah. Um, but I I'm curious more like what the future is going to hold for Universal owning two animation studios like Disney. That's pretty uh, ambitious. They'll probably merge. I mean, apparently they really want to keep them separate, Hmm. uh, because they want to, they like having the two separate brands. Um, and Illumination's like really big. People think that secret life of pets movie is going to do really well. I don't really know why, but you know, anytime, anytime I'm in the theater and I, a secret life of pets trailer comes out and there's kids in the trailer. Anytime the rabbit shits himself, I hear a ton of bellowing laughs from kids and I'm like, that's it. I'm done. So isn't the movie just like Toy Story but with pets? <laughs> that, that's a lot yeah. of movies. That could describe a lot of CG films. The movie, I, you know, because I had almost, I, almost identically the same thought you had, like when I saw it. And is that rabbit like voiced by Kevin Hart? It sounds like Kevin. Yeah, Hart. it is Kevin yeah, Hart. Yeah. Like Kevin Hart, and you know, I like Kevin Hart as a comedian. I think he's a, he's a real funny guy. But I see that white rabbit shitting all over the place. And I was like, ugh. I was like, come on, guys. That right there just told me this movie was. Most likely going to have no soul. The mm-hmm. reason why people will keep revisiting Pixar films yeah. as opposed to DreamWorks. Yeah. As opposed, you know, besides internet meme culture. <laughs> yeah. Maybe it'll have a, a great soundtrack like uh, that upcoming CG film, Song or Sing. Do you guys know about this one movie that comes I out? I have no idea. Uh, uh, no idea. Okay, well, uh, this is going to be like the ants versus... Um, with uh, a bug's life because they look very it looks very similar to Zootopia because it's a society of animals but in this one called Sing coming uh, December it's about animals uh, auditioning for a talent show and they sing songs like Lady Gaga and uh, Butterfly by you know that one thing oh oh gee that, that the, sounds riveting who, who made this that sounds as appealing as that what that storks movie that movie looks like a pile storks. of turds oh yeah. yeah i only know that because one of my friends told me like hey i want to fuck the uh, stork in this movie oh, that oh the voice like honey, about honey if i'm gonna kink shame you then you know you've you know you've hit rock <laughs> oh, bottom illumination <laughs> is making a sing yeah sing um, sounds a lot like rock dog the, the only the only animated kids film I'm excited for now is Kubo of the Two Strains because holy fuck that looks, yeah, that that looks really looks, good that does look really good mm-hmm. a movie where animals I'm assuming animals you just said are singing yeah recent mm-hmm. pop culture songs yep. has about as much appeal as Kids Bop Thirty Seven shit and You're where right, five cause, time because they'll never top kids bop 24 no no. <laughs> i honestly thought 13 was underappreciated but anyway but kids bop 24 just the production quality. i'm i'm still holding out for kids bop 69 you feel me Uh-oh, hot 
no. I'm calling the police. <laughs> but with DreamWorks um, being bought out, I'm kind of worried that all their uh, DreamWorks shows on Netflix will be removed. Do you think that could happen? No. Uh, I mean, I not until so. the contracts are up. Yeah. yeah. Um, until the contract's up. Like, I, I imagine eventually those things are just going to be taken off and I don't know where they're going to go. Maybe just yeah, at least a goes, year. Yeah. Well, doesn't Universal own Hulu? Hmm. Uh, jointly. I think Hulu's owned by Uni- or NBC, Fox, and a third other company. Yeah, so I think they'll probably just move it to Hulu. But that's kind of the thing that's happening with these streaming services is now that there's so many other ones, they're – like Netflix actually has less movies and pro- and shows than it had a year ago because so many are going to like Hulu or any of these new services or Amazon Prime. So it just kind of that's what the nature of the business now. Yeah, and there's all this competition for streaming services. Yeah, there's like a lot. I mean, there there's always more niche ones being announced. So mm-hmm. I don't know. I'm really curious. Like, I really hope there's not a Minion Shrek movie. Uh-huh. That sounds like like. Something no, made no, 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 a remake of the original Shrek, but all the characters are placed with minions dressed like Shrek characters. Oh, that sounds like a special they would do. <laughs> the, yeah, like a the, Halloween the, special. The I'm gonna donkey. Oh, <laughs> just release the Chris Farley audio, you bastards. Maybe they will now. They should just release the whole thing, please. Release the Chris Farley audio. Give that man his final performance to us, please. Get a video game deal with the millions of raving rabbits. Hell yeah. I bet, I bet they'll do another Madagascar, another Shrek, uh, Puss in Boots probably. Like they're going to they're gonna bring out as much stuff as they can. Yeah. I see another Shrek. Not sure about Puss in Boots. How many Shreks were there? Were four. there only four, four Shreks? Is it four? I think it was four. They could do yeah. Shrek 5, you know. I, I saw Shrek 4 in theaters and like by then it's like, man, they were out of steam. It just... By the fifth one, Shrek Boy and Lava Donkey. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Something. Fuck. Oh, please tell me they'll make Shrek Boy and Lava Donkey. I would Shrek love Boy that. and Lava Donkey and Knuckles 3D starring <laughs> featuring Dante from the Devil May Cry series. Oh, my God. That's the exclusive tie-in game. They sh- they need to make this. Like, uh, DreamWorks or Illumination, you're sitting on a gold mine. Yeah, they, <laughs> they can't just miss this opportunity. We should also make an HD remake of uh, the Shrek Xbox game. Does anyone remember that one? I have Shrek oh. 2, and I played it with my friend, and he's like, this is so boring. I'm like, let's play Nicktoons Unite instead. Yeah. And and he's like, this is even worse, Nolan. And I'm like, I'm sorry you wanted to play my PS2 oh, game. Guess, guess, Nolan. <laughs> Listen, Johnny. <laughs> I am a very good host. I have so many PS2 games. Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban, Shrek 2, Nicktoons Unite, all the iToy games. I'm fucking great. Mm-hmm. So great. <laughs> Speaking I, of a weird Xbox Shrek game, like, you know it was developed by DICE, the people who gave you Battlefield and Mirror's Edge, of all people? <laughs> really? This well, is how they started. Well, this is one of their first games. Yes, I'm, I'm ashamed to admit that Mirror's Edge began life as a failed Shrek prototype. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, this game is... You don't know how bad Shrek that parkouring it. through the swamp and, like, <laughs> kicking Donkey. You're, you're actually not far off from the actual gameplay, because in this game, uh, Shrek runs way unnaturally fast and jumps high and just bounces around on everything. Like, you can literally wall jump on any surface, and he just goes fucking 0 to 60 instantly, and... Also, Donkey, Fiona, a lot of the characters aren't even in this game. It's just, it's like Sh- Shrek in like some bootleg film because you see nobody from the films in this game besides Shrek. Wasn't this the T-rated one? Yeah, the T-rated one. The And it's and the character designs are by Todd McFarlane, the creator of Spawn. <laughs> Todd McFarlane? Well, because well, McFarlane, uh, McFarlane Toys did the action figures for Shrek. <laughs> yeah. It's like this game is just a weird enigma. Just like, where did this come from, and why does it not feel like Shrek at all? Yeah. Was it a good game, or was it just? Eh? It was like a pretty mediocre Mario sixty four clone. Why does it always come back to Shrek? <laughs> it just keeps happening. <laughs> but is that all for the for DreamWorks? Well, because Shrek is love. Shrek is life. <laughs> I'm, I'm just gonna. Step- <laughs> I'm just going to give this video, like, the super clickbaitiest title, like, is DreamWorks fucking dead? Are they? <laughs> what happens in hour three will shock you. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, let's go, let's go into the final bit of news, which is not really news, but we have the fan Reddit 
fan dv nerd in the description and also the fan junk youtube playlist so if you have any youtube videos pertaining to rebel taxi or the podcast just uh, send them to me at rebel taxi at yahoo.com and i received one of my favorite ones it's this guy who um saw my what i my thoughts on the powerpuff girls <laughs> <laughs> this is so great what is this nero's q Nero's Q. He's great. Um, he made this rebuttal saying, hey, you're wrong about this reboot. You got so many things wrong. And from my two minute segment on the, in that top 10, he uh, made a 17 minute video explaining why I was wrong. Holy and, shit. And then in the end. In the end, um, he animates his uh, uh, his uh, character, which is a character in a hoodie. <laughs> and like you don't see his face, you just see eyes like a Jawa and stuff. And his hoodie character uses a scythe, a Grim Reaper scythe, to chop off my character's head off. <laughs> what? And it says, fatality. And it says, number of sins. 40 sins. And he chops or six. It was 16. 16. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I think it was in the teens. Like, oh, what in God's name did I just listen to? It's amazing. Okay. I'll link it below. I'm like he disabled. <laughs> he disabled the ratings. If you, th- if you think you have a, if you think you have a goofy fan base, sometimes welcome to the Rebel Taxi fan base, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> Look, we all went through a phase where we created like an edgy uh, OC with a Grim Reaper scythe and a hoodie. No, we yeah. Just to clarify, we we don't hate this guy or anything. I think he's fucking great. <laughs> you challenge me, like we should bring him on, and we just have like a, a debate. Like, does the Powerpuff Girls suck? Nero's Q. If you are listening to this, we would love to have you on the podcast to talk about the Powerpuff Girls reboot. We will not be mean. We will not be disparaging. We literally just want to have a chat with you. It would be so great. Please. <laughs> yeah. Next, let's do it next time. If you can come if on, we can get him. Oh, actually, let's we have a uh, we have Lou Tune scheduled for next time. Oh, sweet. Oh. Okay then. Um, eventually. Yeah, eventually. eventually. I mean, we'll get around to it. We got stuff. <laughs> but yes. I'm going to look at what you got wrong, as I must critique the critic. Take off those cheap nostalgia glasses and give it a fair chance. Of course it's not going to be like the original. But you know what? The original wasn't that great. It was a good show, and me and my friends love growing up with it, but it still has its flaws. For one, the animation was good, and it had its own style, but this show's animation is a hundred times better! Although my favorite part of of his video, besides the Grim Reaper thing, is um, he says, If you don't like the new Powerpuff Girls, don't watch it! He he just made a a 17 minute video on my two minutes of ranting about it! (laughs) So great. I saw this video on Tumblr because you were you were responding to it on there, and like I was on Skype with a friend, and I was kind of like, you don't know how badly I want to hang up right now and watch this video, <laughs> and, she, and she's just like, no, no, go for it, go for it. I'm like, no, no, I'm not, I'm, I respect you too much as as a friend. I'll wait until after you get off, and she just immediately hangs up on me, and then just types, go watch it. Yeah, <laughs> I can tell. <laughs> it was worth it. <laughs> it was so good. Yeah, he disabled ratings, so you know he. He lives in fear. Uh, and now we're now we're now we're just getting we're just being like picking it apart. So, oh. but Nero's Q, please, please join us sometime. We would love to have you. We would like to speak with the only fan of the new reboot, Powerpuff Girls. <laughs> yeah, oh. I've never heard of a positive review of that this whole time. I mean, that's the only one. I debated on making a video about it because there's some good parts to it, but it, there it, it's so much worse. Yeah, jo- Johnny, have you seen? The new reboot or anything Powerpuff Girls related? I've seen enough where I don't want to waste my time because I'll, I'll, I'll be the first to say I am a fan of the original Powerpuff Girls cartoon. Do I go back to it? No. More often than not, if I'm going to go back to a, a Cartoon Network classic, it's most likely going to be Dexter's Laboratory or mm-hmm. maybe Johnny Bravo and maybe one or two episodes of Courage Cotley the Dog. Powerpuff Girls I have memories with, but... I don't go back to it. and th- But the thing that bothers me about the new Powerpuff Girls cartoon is that it is so, so indulgent in meme culture. Oh, yeah. But the thing is, is Can that... your opinion... I mean, Jay, on your opinions, no me gusta. <laughs> it's, yeah, I did see that clip, by the way. And, and, and everyone shares the damn girls twerking with the panda. And I want nothing to do with it. At the same time, though, I realize... I'm not sure if this is a good or bad thing, but it's a reflection of the times we live in where social media is so heavily involved with everything we do. 
as a society. And what is one thing we love to do? We share memes. We make fun of things. And they're just trying to capitalize on it. And it just rubs everyone in their 20s and up the wrong way. And mm-hmm. I don't get it. I, I don't think don't. I don't think it rubs anybody the right way, though. Yeah, maybe. I mean, I mean, I know. I mean, I see I see kids like it. I mean, they're, they're demographic, to be fair. But uh, it's like they're going to like in, in a year's time, they're probably not going to talk about it. They're not going to think about I mean, it. And then too, this is this is too poochy for me. Yeah. <laughs> no. Too, um, yeah. You know, when you put it that way. It sounds horrible. Because <laughs> like to me, it's like like they checked off all the things they thought kids would like from focus groups. And like specific demos and we're like, let's make the show this. And that's kind of like, I don't think people like that kind of adaptations anymore. I don't think people ever did. I mean, what is it like Popeye and son or something like that? Like, you know, it's like they need to think about like what's right for the character and not what's possibly could sell the best because those, that's really what you should think about. I mean, that's why the Marvel movies do so well is because they're right for the character, not right for, you know, whichever time period. Uh, so mm-hmm. the re- most recent episode I watched, um, there was a scene where they had to fight these ghosts and somehow th- their way of stopping these ghosts are for- is basically forming a rap group and they have a scene where they say, when I say hey, you say ho. Oh. And they do that for the conclusion of that episode. Really? Oh, yeah. Who are they writing for? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> But um, like the next video is gonna be a twenty-minute review on uh, the new Powerpuff Girls, and the funny thing is, it doesn't even mention Miss Bellum or uh, the animation errors or that stupid fucking pony or anything. Like it's twenty minutes of just other stuff that I don't have that I still have like maybe two or three parts ahead of me. So yeah. Oh, what? this I can't. I we should maybe wait until those videos are out so nearest Q can watch them then. Ed Bart. Ed Bart. Woof, woof, woof. Look, Squidgy. It's our new friend, Poochie. What's that name again? I forgot. The name's Poochie D, and I rock the telly. I'm half Joe Camel and a third Bonzarelli. I'm the Kung Fu hippie from Gangsta City. I'm a rapping surfer, you the fool I pity. Poochie is one outrageous dude. He's totally in my face. Wiggity, wiggity, word up. Hey, kids, always recycle. To the extreme, busted! Speaking of old Cartoon Network shows, though, uh, I doubt you have, Johnny, but have you seen Semionic Titan? Uh, what is that? <laughs> nope. Sim- well, the answer's no, by the way, but maybe. Oh, uh, <laughs> Um, so I, I gush about Sam Ionic Titan so much because that was made by the same guy who did Dexter's Lab in Samurai Jack. Oh. And it's a cartoon about uh, three aliens. Uh, one's a robot, one's the, an alien princess, and the other is a royal guard. And they get sent away from their home planet, and they have to live like normal high school lives and hiding. But they also fight giant monsters, and it's like a huge mash of like fighting kaijus and mech battles and – it's such a good cartoon. Yeah, it was but, a really good show. But it got written off by um, for taxes, and so it'll never never air again. And it got canceled at the first season. So I take every opportunity I can to spread the gospel about this show because I love it. Symbionic Titan, you said? Yes, mm-hmm. um, it's on iTunes. Um, I'd recommend you buy it. But if you're um, iffy, you can you could probably watch it on Kiss Cartoon or something. It's really good. It's like one of my favorite cartoons ever. So. Okay, it's, only like, it's only a handful of episodes. Like, it's only 20. Yeah. It was only a season order. So if you like shows that have like re- like a ongoing storyline. Heavily that, serialized. Yeah. And uh, it has a lot of like, it, 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 art style wise. It's more modern, but like storytelling. And it reminds me a lot of 80s cartoons. Like it just has that vibe from, you know, that Voltron era. Oh, yeah, it was. You're right. Yeah. He was heavily inspired by Voltron, so yeah. mm-hmm. it, it probably the fact they have Flock of Seagulls making a song in there too kind of helps. Yeah, yeah. I'm looking at a clip of the show right now, and it definitely I get the Hanna Barbera sort of esque 
yeah. character construction, but the faces totally remind me of Dexter's laboratory. Like this is Dexter in his mid twenties. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Watching a girl shake her ass in booty jeans. Oh, you're watching oh, that no, scene. Not that one. Don't watch that one. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh no. Everybody starts off with that fucking clip. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody, literally, that's that's the one clip that gets like tens of millions of views, and everybody's like, "God, Cartoon Network's so sexist now." And I'm like, "You saw that clip out of context. You shut the fuck up." <laughs> I get so mad. I get so heated over that. A classic scene. <laughs> fuck, I hate my life. Just. Oh. Man, I remember when that aired. I was like, "Is this really happening on TV? What the fuck?" <laughs> Don't don't judge the show on that clip, please. No, no, no. I'm smarter than that. Yeah. Okay, good. Thank you. So, you guys want to get into the questions? Yeah. Um, the isosceles triangle has two congruent sides. <sighs> Shake it, bake it, booty quake it. That's right. Roll it around. Don't bake it. Shake it, bake it, booty quake it. Shake it, bake it, booty quake it. No. Hey, Nolan, my favorite thing about that clip, though, is just the no. <laughs> uh, yeah, that, that's basically me whenever somebody sends the clip. It's just oh, it hurts a man. Questions. If anybody has a question, be sure to post your question in the YouTube comments below and be sure to post it in the first week this video is up. So our first question is by the chode man. Question. What is your favorite use of... What? <laughs> you heard it. <laughs> okay. What is your favorite use of multimedia? Example, the amazing world of Gumball. I think he means mixed media. But do you guys have a favorite use of mixed um, media? Um, I'm going to say Symbionic Titan again. <laughs> that doesn't fucking count. It's t um, 3D, CG, and 2D. That counts. Okay, yeah, I guess that oh, does kind of count. Wait, 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 wait. No, I mean, honestly, you have to get how far do we go with this? Because you could say Futurama because the most of the planets and vehicles are also 3d oh yeah hmm well i guess uh, let's start off with an easier well let me just say uh courage the cowardly dog since that always incorporates like real life photos or just weird cg or claymation creatures into their cartoon and it always comes off as unsettling which is perfect for courage the cowardly dog i mean wouldn't space goes coast to coast count oh yeah because the background's like a, a prop yeah, I would go Space Ghost Coast to Coast. Gumball is, I love that Gumball has all these different character designs and uh, mm -hmm. like, like the, that there's like CG characters and there's like claymation characters and hand-drawn characters. It's really cool. Because it looks really amazing from all the uh, special effects that they used, all the filters and everything. Well, it's all it, coherent. Yeah. It shouldn't be. It should be a mess, but it's not. It all blends together. Yeah. Like, um, this reminds me, uh, on Netflix, there's a new Danger Mouse cartoon, and it also does the same effect as Gumball. Although it doesn't blend in together as well as Gumball. It looks more pasted together. Although that Danger Mouse cartoon is pretty good, I guess. Like, I, I saw a few episodes. Look that up, since that actually is a superhero show, unlike Powerpuff Girls. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I think I'm going to have to say either Space Jam or Who Framed Roger Rabbit. <laughs> yeah. Well, oh, Roger Rabbit. Fuck. Hey, hey. Oh, wait. Should we have talked about Space Jam today? Oh, my God. News. Space Jam 2 is confirmed. Oh, here it goes. Yeah. Yeah, it has a director. Oh, yeah. It's got a director. But, um, yeah, like, there's finally news on Space Jam. But what's sad is the official Space Jam website is still up, and they didn't even update it for all this news. What? Like, oh, they're still, like, rocking GeoCities domain? Yeah, it's still there, and, like, they didn't update the news part of that old classic website. It's bullshit. <laughs> At this point, you can't change it. It's part of internet history. It's, to change it would be def no. disgracing. Yeah, that, that, 
that, that's an ethical topic on its own. It's like, should they add would an be update ruining to history. the Space Jam website just to say, hey, new Space Jam is coming? That's true. Maybe it's you, you're right. Maybe it's not really official then. I mean, I'm 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 looking at the press box on the Space Jam website. It says no Space Jam news at the no moment. Go back to the homepage to see more of the site. <laughs> see, that's a mistake because we're all we know there's news. See, I think my pitch for Space Jam Two this is a good idea. I already said this on Twitter, but I'm 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 really into this. Is you have Jordan. And the Looney Tunes on one side, and you have LeBron and the Tiny Tunes on another side, and it's like Civil War or something. <laughs> oh man! Okay. I legitly just got excited for Space Jam too. <laughs> see, see, that's an idea. People will be like, "Oh shit, I have to see that." But if it's just going to be like LeBron with the Looney Tunes, no, thank you. I don't even care. I want, I want, I want like, and the Lunatics show up at yeah. the end of the, of the, oh, end of the movie. Dude. <laughs> Like, that's what they need to do. They should hire you. I know. Look, guys, if you want to contact me, I will write a treatment or you can get me drunk and I'll just perform the whole movie as I see it. (laughs) And also bring back Martian (laughs) Queen from Duck Dodgers. You know, I'll probably throw out some real crazy shit. Like, I want Bill Murray to be there. I want to get, you know, let's get, uh, who else was in the uh, Charles Barkley. Let's get <laughs> Charles Barkley's awesome. Let's get Charles Barkley as Wayne the coach Knight. or Wayne something. Knight. Yeah, you got to bring yeah. Wayne Knight back in. Did he Did he lose weight? Isn't he like not fat anymore? Oh, if something? he's not fat anymore, then there's no point in it. Get, get him out <laughs> do of there. <laughs> do, you ever, do you ever wonder that? If you're like an actor and you're famous, but you're famous for being like fat, do you have to? like stay fat like do you like i better eat a cheeseburger like two cheeseburgers today because i gotta maintain this one isn't that what happened to jonah hill is that what happened no he lost weight no 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 well see see the my theory is that anyone that was first fat and found and then became famous because of it and then they get skinnier they also get less funny and i think funny is like the first thing to lose when you start losing weight no (laughs) what what kind what kind of surrealist bullshit are we getting into right now no no what i'm i'm what i'm saying is like like if you do you have to maintain being fat like is that part of your job you know what i i never thought i'd ever be part of a wayne knight tangent i'm sorry for bringing this upon you guys but uh he's i know he he's known for being big thanks to jurassic park and seinfeld but i think there was a kid's movie where he was in where he was skinny as hell and it weirded me out and it was never I'm released and it, i'm trying to remember when i was a kid's film i think it was cheaper by the dozen or something like that uh and i did not recognize him at first but then i think he gained some of that weight back as of mm. recently wait are they gonna can we can we, if they make space jam 2 could they just promise me that josh gad is not in it because he's i josh gad the guy from he was in frozen as olaf and He's like super annoying. If they can just promise me he, he's not in it, just anyone else, just not Josh Gad. It's funny that we went Jurassic Park because immediately when I heard about Space Jam Two, I had that thought of like we're so occupied if if they should or if they could, not if they should. The the John Go uh, the Go Booth quote. <laughs> Go yeah. Booth quote. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm getting tongue tied tonight. Sorry, guys. <laughs> no, I think I think they should. But do my idea for Space Jam too. Yeah, I like the treatment so far. Yeah, just bring yeah, in Martian Queen. That's all I need. I'll, I'll suggest that in the pitch meeting. I'm going to have a lot of crazy ideas. And I was like, guys, let's bring in Superman and Batman. And, and they brothers. can come in there. Yeah. And they'll be like, they'll be like, Ben Affleck won't do this. And I go, yeah, but Henry Cavill will. It's fine. He's got. <laughs> oh. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. The Looney Tunes are now canon to the uh, DC cinematic universe? I'm Why not? Sh- let's do well. it. Let's do it. I mean, you know, it's all a jar of piss anyway. Yeah, anything under the WB license shows the universe. Yeah. So. We got to bring in the Lego movie. Uh, oh, yeah, Scoob. Scoob. Uh, oh, I yes. I can't it's... talk about it. I found out stuff, and I oh, can't boy. talk. Cut it. Cut it out. Okay, cut this out, no, Pan. No, no. Damn. No, we'll... We can, I anyway. It my so bad. Oh, my Jesus. Scoob will be on the sidelines. We'll launch that universe as well. We'll have a part where... Um, uh, the Tasmanian devil goes on his computer and gets emailed an email from Batman. And, uh, <laughs> and he was like, I've, is this you? And it's Tasmanian devil eating a bunch of tacos. And then, <laughs> and then it'll be files of all the things for the Hanna-Barbera thing. Warner brothers. This is just, I, I could do the whole movie. Let's just stop the podcast. I'll just start. 
Michael, okay. This it, needs to happen. I know. My, my, Michael, Jordan, House. Michael Jordan has like the one weapon to kill uh, their ultimate bad guy, which is, um, fuck, who, who's the bad guy? LeBron. LeBron. LeBron should be the bad guy. Come yeah, on. LeBron can only be killed by a kryptonite spear, but uh, for some reason, <laughs> <laughs> Michael Jordan throws the spear down a rabbit hole, and he's like, oh shit, I gotta go get down there and get it. And he goes down there, and then that's where the movie starts. Try oh, wait, and, <laughs> and Charles Barkley can be Doomsday. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Well, that's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> you already got beat up enough on Clerks. Oh, I love Charles Barkley. <laughs> Barkley showed up and jam. That was a game he was in. Oh, and they can get the Quad City DJs to come back and do the, the Space Jam Shaz- theme. A cameo by Shazam, Shaquille O'Neal. Oh, you mean Kazam? That's Kazam. That's Kazam. That's Kazam. Like, Kazam. Kazam. <laughs> should be like the Thanos. <laughs> oh, fuck yeah. <laughs> oh, wait, Nolan, are you saying do this as an expanded universe? Like do a, a Space Jam trilogy? Yeah, and then and then Shaquille O'Neal's just like, hey man, I got the Infinity Gauntlet. <laughs> I'm gonna put the smack down on you and B-ball, man. Yeah, but it's it's actually it's, it's not Infinity game. Stones; it's just NBA Championship rings. <laughs> yeah. Oh yes. And it, <laughs> this is this is amazing. Yeah, I know. It's like by the end of this podcast, we're gonna have an entire you know screenplay. I'm I'm down. Yes. Some yeah. some guy at Warner Brothers right now is writing down all this, and he goes, "Wait, I need to pause it." Oh God! It's like fools. They have no idea. All the Warner Brothers properties combined. I mean, they still have Speed Racer to throw him in, a Lego Movie put him in. No, and then when the trailer hits, it's like the, it's said, everybody get up. It's time to slam now. And then don't, 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 dubstep, dubstep. <laughs> no, that, that's not how they'll do it. It'll be, it'll be quiet. It'll be like a piano and it'll be all sad. It'll be oh, like, yes. And Marilyn Manson fun. cut. Yeah. And yeah. Then, yeah. And then, uh, and then, uh, like tunes are reporting that like tunes are getting erased from existence by a giant basketball eraser. <laughs> 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 or, or, or you could do it. <laughs> you could do it like the tunes were on a, a nice goodwill mission, and they ended up killing people, and so now it's a Watchmen type scenario. Oh, and and Jordan represents the side that doesn't want to be contained, but LeBron does. So it's like Watchmen and Civil War, but with the Looney Tunes. <laughs> Jesus <laughs> fucking Christ. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no. So basically, what I'm what I'm pitching is possibly the worst thing ever, but also the best thing. Hell no! <laughs> this, is, this is this is gonna make break cinematic box office history. What are you talking about? It, it'll it'll break the box office so wide open, no nothing will be able to be released. This will be the end of cinema, <laughs> is what I'm. Like, people will be like, just just call it call it a day. We will never be able to. Top Space Jam Two. All net, all uh, movie theaters shut down after that. And there's no more theaters in the world. It's over. I mean, I'm pitching this as a four hour movie. Um, so there's, <laughs> no, it's, there's gonna no, be a whole no, that's, scene that's where the theatrical cut, the you know, extended no, no, no. cut. Oh man! That, oh, the, the extended R- cut. That's the R-rated you know, extended cut for a Blu-ray exclusive. <laughs> I, you know, no one's made a movie long enough to be on two separate Blu-rays, but I, I think this movie will have to have two separate. <laughs> like, you, it'll have to say, go to Blu-ray 2 because it's so awesome. And it'll say that on there. It'll, be... And there'll be a whole th- theme scene in a therapy office where Bugs and Daffy work out their issues. It's going to be amazing. Oh, my God. Yeah, so Space Jam 2 is confirmed. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the end game of this whole this whole conversation. Listen, <laughs> Warner Brothers, you will never top this conversation yeah. that just happened. At least include Martian Queen. That's all it needs. Martian Queen. It was the whole Civil War poster. Sorry, not trailer. The whole poster. Jordan on one side, LeBron on the other, and uh, right near LeBron, the Tiny Tunes, and right near Jordan, all the Looney Tunes, and they're facing each other like in the poster. This is sad because now I have the greatest expectations for this movie and they're never going to be met now. No way. <laughs> it's never going to be that awesome. No, it'll just be like LeBron and the Looney Tunes. Come see it. We can we can write a fan fiction and just send it to like a Hollywood producer and it's like, so what do you think? It's going to work, right? <laughs> it's going to be great. And he'll be like, to be, <laughs> to be honest, this is how Jurassic World started, so we're not mad. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, so... Johnny, do you have any questions you can answer on the uh, from the Twitter? Uh, yeah, let me take a look here. I haven't refreshed the page yet. 
Why he's looking. Uh, how come we didn't talk about the new Power Ranger suits? Oh, right. The new Power Ranger suits were announced, and they look like Iron Man for the movie, the yeah. theatrical Power Rangers movie. I mean, the heads look right, but, like, the whole the rest of the body kind of looks generic, like Iron Man suits. <laughs> I, st- I still don't get, like, so they're not going to use, like, scenes from a show from Japan for the movie? <laughs> no. Well, Did so they the, do that like, for the first movie? No. Uh-uh, it's no. Because oh, that, that's the reason why the suits were, you know, like the original series, but upgraded in more detail to, you know, show higher production value, which is what should have happened here. Mm-hmm. But, um... They, I don't know. They also included, it's not in the main image, but there's a secondary image you can find of the Green Ranger next to them, and the Green Ranger is a girl, which means it's most likely Rita Repulsa, yeah. since her her costume looks very similar but i noticed they also have a bunch of like um veins all across their their costumes so it's kind of like lord zed their villain's uh outfit so what i'm thinking is they're gonna do that hollywood thing where they combine all the origin stories together like they were former uh bad guys or they had these outfits from former bad guys who worked for lord zed and now they have them well, because the suits look exactly like Lord Zed yeah. in different ways with the veins and such. And then you have Rila Raposa being the original Green Ranger. It's just this weird uh, – uh, uh, Hollywood spends way too much time trying to, like, make everything connected to each other. Like, you know, the fates have to be pre-designed and put together, yeah. you know. The turtles had to be April O'Neil's pets when she was little. When she was making Project uh, Renaissance. I just – it's it's unnecessary and like I mean don't get me wrong I'm going to see the Power Ranger movie exclusively because Elizabeth Banks as Rita Repulsa is amazing, but I don't know after seeing the the suits that really killed a lot of motivation for me. Yeah. I mean to me it's like why why make a Power Rangers movie after Power slash Rangers? Like you're not going to top that. Like that's that's going to be way better. I mean they need Jans Vanderbeek. Oh, fucking Vanderbeek. I'm glad the suits actually have color and they're not just like black with maybe like a a red streak or a green streak for each costume. They didn't pull an X-Men. Oh, but people <laughs> hate those costumes now, though. Yeah, everyone looks back on X-Men. Well, at the time, everyone was like, that X, that first X-Men movie came out after Batman and Robin. And everyone was afraid of, of looking too silly with superheroes. But now they've kept that aesthetic going. So it's like this outdated, weird... Matrixy aesthetic that's continued on to 2016. So, uh, Johnny, you have any questions? Yeah, I do actually. We've got a couple here. Uh, do I start with the obvious? Go ahead, from Nolan. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what do you think of Nolan? I hear he's shredded that he has an eight pack. I didn't even know an eight pack was possible. What the fuck? Nolan, you have an eight pack? Yeah, I have. Nolan, you have an eight pack? Oh, um, oh my god! Thank you for noticing. Uh, yes, I do have an eight pack. Um, well, did didn't you get that eight pack when you saved those kittens from a burning building? Why, yes, Jim, I did. Thank you for That's mentioning. Yeah. Very convenient fact. I remember as if it was yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty crazy because you had already saved those old ladies and all those really rare video games from that burning building also. Yeah, I know. I saved all the copies of Nintendo World Championship and I also saved um, the Action 52 games, but then I realized they were bad, so I let them burn. <laughs> <laughs> but it was saving the cat that gave you the 8-pack. Yes, and then also I had time to bench press in between all that, so that's, that's why absolutely I absolutely fine. Yeah, I mean they were they were large cats in his defense. <laughs> tigers, they rescued tigers. <laughs> yes, <laughs> he rescued tigers. All right, there's a question from Certified Dark Bro. Uh, when's the Sonic 25th anniversary interview? Dog, I'll get to your question in a second. Wait in line. All right. <laughs> You got an interview or what? See, it's going to be a little weird because if you edit out the dog and people are going to think I'm, he's talking to his imaginary dog again. <laughs> Why don't you get this guy? Anyway, uh, the Sonic 25th anniversary interview. So those of you who don't know, uh, on my main channel, two of my most popular videos are some of the only cartoons I've ever done on the channel in there where I interview Sonic characters, usually in celebration for an anniversary. And I plan on making a third one, but I learned from last time it's not a good idea to set a deadline because you'll never make it and you'll end up disappointing a lot of people when you do that. So the best I can say is I'm going to do it. I just don't know when it will be out. Mm-hmm. So well, this is what you want to hear. William Shh. 
Shognissi says, this is a question for some call me Johnny. Do you have any weird or funny experiences during Pokemania? Are we talking like when it was at a fever pitch in the 90s? Oh, I thought that was like a convention or something. No, oh, because I didn't, uh, you, you know, I think Pokemania and I think like Hulk Hogan rocking like a Pikachu onesie. <laughs> no. but actually, actually, it's funny you bring Hulk, Hulk Hogan up because I went to a Pokemon anniversary event in New York, in New York and Hulk Hogan was there. Like this was <laughs> really? in the 90s, right? Who, my thing or his yeah, thing? Yeah, your thing. Hulk Hogan thing. No, it was like 2006. Oh, yeah. Clo- oh, damn. Never mind. Hmm. Uh, I'm just gonna assume that he meet Pokemania is like when Pokemon was at an all time fever pitch in around the late '90s, and I wouldn't say anything really weird happened to me. I mean, I got tragic memories. <laughs> tragic. Like my Pokemon, yeah, Tra- my, my Pokemon cards getting stolen, and Uh-oh. that's about it. Oh, fuck. Fuck. goodbye to but- Exodia. <laughs> That's you, yo, you son of a bitch. <laughs> Close enough. You know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Okay. Well, you know what. All right, I do have some sort of memory. It's kind of like I guess karma is a bit of a bitch when it comes to this because at the same time my Pokemon cards were stolen in middle school because I was in junior high or middle school, however you guys want to call it. At the time, Pokemon was on everybody's minds. Uh, I my my um, cousin uh, Santiago, great guy, was a security officer at the middle school that I attended, and it was his job. When kids were really being really stupid about it to confiscate Pokemon cards. <laughs> Can you guess where those Pokemon cards went after he confiscated them? Uh oh, you heard. That's right. They went into my collection. Oh. And that was after they got stolen. So I had the biggest shit eating grin on my face after that because it was like I was coming out on top because I got a relative as a security guard in the school. That's about it though, because everything else is pretty standard. I watched the movies, but I played the games. How'd they get stolen? Oh, I, I left my backpack in the classroom when I went to go to a bathroom break. That was enough. I guess someone knew that I had a binder full of Pokemon cards in my bag. Damn. By the time I came back, the bag was opened. Oh, no. Cleaned Karma. out. Yeah. Yeah. What can I say? Hey, guys. Get out of here. You don't want to play. <laughs> Introducing the Pokemon Trading Card Game for Game Boy. You can learn all the secrets and strategies you'll need to become a true Pokemon Master Trainer, rated E for everyone. Ha! A Thunder Punch combined with the Paralyzing Attack move makes Electabuzz arguably the best all around Pokemon in the game. Limited edition card inside. Gotta catch them all. Let's see other questions. Beetor Gripley says, question. On the subject of comic book media, what is your favorite deviation from the source material? Are there any like adaptions or uh, based on anything that you're like... You understand why they made the change and prefer it this way? Scott Pilgrim. How so? Because a lot of fans are divided by that movie. I think it's well, a great movie. But I yeah, it's agree. it's an awesome movie. I think it's a fan- phenomenal movie. I, I can still... Um, I-, I enjoy the movie, I'll be honest, a little more than the comic book. I enjoy the comic book, but by volume five and six, I think it sort of loses itself. Mm-hmm. And what it wanted to be or what it strived to be. And then it just didn't really know how to end. So... Mm-hmm. For that, I'll deduct points, but the, the movie, I think, does a, a, just a phenomenal job. You know, Edgar Wright, that guy's always on point with his films. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I will go back and watch the Cornetto trilogy any time of the day. Um, but any other sort of brand, Marvel, DC, I can't really think about it. I mean, because I can bring up the obvious Batman v Superman and how it changed things for the worse, and I still don't understand yeah. why they did some of those changes, but that's a totally different topic for another day. I did like a whole hour podcast on my channel with my buddy Gareth on that, and uh, I, I don't want to beat a dead horse, but uh, no, I have real, relatively no experience with drastic changes that I didn't think were really good or really bad for that matter. But was the question just drastic changes you liked or drastic changes in general? Favorite deviation from a source material? For well, me, I, I guess I, like um, uh, Spider-Man's organic web shooters, you know, if it's organic, like it, there's a debate of either mechanical where he builds web shooters or it's just uh-huh. organic and it's part of the spider bite. I, I just like the spider bite one that, that just gets it out of the way and just says, here, he has these powers. Who cares? Get on with well, it. The, I think it leads to a larger thing that like Peter Parker is a scientist. Oh. And without that, I mean, you still kind of have it, but it 
leads to like that he's actually a really talented scientist and like in civil war this isn't really a spoiler but uh spider-man has the um ma- he, the made web shooters not the organic mm-hmm. ones but that i i don't mind that in comic book movies where you're <clears throat> like kind of doing something for time and just something that will do better in a movie like in X-Men Days of Future Past, like, I know that story. That's one of my favorite comic book stories ever. And in the comic book, it was Kitty Pride who goes back in time uh, and tells them, you know, what's going to happen. And obviously that wouldn't work in the movies because Kitty Pride's not really that big of a part of the movies. I mean, she's in them, but she's not that big. And so they made it Wolverine, and that made a lot I thought that was a good choice. I mean, most of them I agree with. I'm sure they're like, I didn't like what they did to the Mandarin in Iron Man 3, but also like if they had the Mandarin, that would have been super racist. So, you know, there's like, <laughs> like the same thing with the Doctor Strange thing. It's like, yeah, they did change the ancient one to Tilda Swinton. But at the same time, if they had the ancient one and people would be like, oh, that's a racial stereotype. So sometimes it's like, they just kind of have to because doing it directly just doesn't really work. Like it would just be awkward. So, you know, most of the time I'm for it for most of the Marvel stuff. I think it's worked. I think DC, it gets a little dicey, you know, Does, is this exclusively movies? Because like, well, it's whatever I you're really, done. I really enjoy X-Men evolution. Oh yeah. X-Men in high school. And that's a huge departure. <laughs> Like, I, I didn't like it when it first came out, but, like, I think it was right when YouTube started putting up legal uploads of stuff. And I think X-Men Evolution was one of the first shows they did. It was on It and Hulu, and I got to kind of, like, binge watch it uh, just to put something on my worked on stuff. And I fell in love with it. I really, really enjoyed that version of the, the characters. And, uh, I mean, like, I'm not really a big source material type of person, so, like, I don't watch or I don't read the comics. And I would also argue Ninja Turtles. Yeah. Because yeah. they're a huge departure. Yeah, that that whole cartoon was nothing like the comic at all, really. Mm-hmm. Oh, also so. Ghost in the Shell. Ghost yeah. in the Shell was, like, Makoto was so much different from the manga and in the movie. I like the movie version a lot more. Don Patchy says, question, Hey, Pan, as a fellow Hispanic, what was the craziest show you have seen on Mexican television? Oh, oh boy. Well... For me, whenever I watch Mexican television, it's usually just like dubs of like the Simpsons or anything else that we have over here. But I always catch my parents watching some weird uh, Mexican programming that I have no idea what it is. Like, I don't know, there's just this weird sitcom or comedy where it's just these grown men, these grown adults in a classroom. And they're clearly like in their 30s, but it looks like a classroom for kids. And I don't know. Oh, shit. I've seen this show. There's one guy who has like his brain exposed for some reason. (laughs) <laughs> like his brain yeah, and is all the ladies up. are like the teachers like a sexy lady yeah it's like what is this some sort of porno i don't understand i mean that's that seems to be like most because i i've watched i guess i haven't really watched mexican tv but i've watched univision and that <laughs> that seems to happen a lot where you see like like this show and it's like a bunch of fat dudes and then really hot ladies and you're like whoa what is this <laughs> yep. i was like i mean i will say i like looking at <laughs> Mexican TV. I don't know what's going on though. I'm like, I mean, these ladies look nice and these it's, it's just seems really weird, but I don't know what they're saying. So I bet it makes more sense if I. Sabado Gigante. Oh yeah. That's what I remember. I remember Sabado Gigante the most. What's that show? El Chapo? Uh, El Chavo? Primero, Primero Impacto where it's just car chases and stuff. Oh yeah. That's my dad always watches that. It's, I think it's like some sort of tabloid show or something. I mean, I've, I used to watch that show cause you could just kind of, you could watch a bunch of cars explode and car chases and stuff. Primero Impacto is pretty much like, it reminds me of Six Sad World from uh, Daria where it's just nothing but tragedies and stuff. No, that's exactly, it is exactly Six Sad World. So if you want to watch Six Sad World from Daria, look up Primero Impacto premiere impact that's on univ it's either univision or tele it's it's on american tv because i've seen it here so and i don't know there's always that one channel that always plays el chavo this comedian in mexico like he had a cartoon also and he he's known for having a an exclusive wii video game for the nintendo wii and it's the only available in mexico and it's super rare so if anybody has that uh hopefully it's a good game because i have no idea 
But why, is, why is he such a... Is he a really funny guy or something? Well, he's kind of, like, very... I don't know. He's always on, like, some channel on at one point. <laughs> like, I'm always, like, I always flew through the channels. And he's always there. Like, th- this show hasn't, hasn't made any new episodes since, like, the 70s and 80s. And it's still going. They just keep rerunning the same episodes. <laughs> Nobody, I guess nobody has DVDs in Mexico. Yeah, Johnny, Johnny's overdue for a question. Yeah. Johnny, you're Hispanic also, right? Yes, I am. Okay. I and think. You see any weird, crazy <laughs> stuff on Mexican TV? Uh, yeah, see, I didn't, my my parents didn't watch a whole lot of yeah, Hispanic television, Mexican, Puerto Rican, otherwise. Uh, I, brought, I bring up Sabado Gigante because that's what my grandma and my aunt watched religiously every Saturday. Oh, yeah. Mine too. And... If it wasn't that, it was uh, novellas, mm-hmm. and I have no idea what's going on, but whatever. And maybe one episode of Tailspin in Spanish. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but, but that's about that's about it when it comes to uh, Hispanic television because everything else, I'm, it's usually uh, English. So I'm I'm pretty yeah. happy with that. I mean, Salvador Gigante is basically like this weird variety show where. Yeah. I mean, like, if you were to see this as just, like, a person who speaks English, you would have no idea what's going on. Like, it's partially a reality show, partially a game show, uh, and there's just this weird Grim Reaper-looking thing, like this guy in a hood <laughs> with a trumpet for some reason. <laughs> and the host always says, applausos para ella, and everyone just applauds for this one scene. Well, because they're afraid of the Grim Reaper. Yeah, so. it's like, I don't know what's going on with this. Nobody knows. Uh, neither do I. But I'm distracted by all the pretty colors, the game show, and the ladies, so yeah, that could be it. But um, any final questions you got, Johnny? All right. Uh, one person asked here, uh, Weirdo T0, what are my influences in animation and art? And surprisingly, I can't really answer that Like with, like, I can, like, name – I mean, I could lie to myself <laughs> and say Classic Disney and mm-hmm. Don Bluth. Uh, but the fact of the matter is I am nowhere near that caliber of animation. Uh, I'm happy with what, with what I can achieve by myself, but as for influences, it's, I'm, I'm not really influenced by a whole lot of people from from cartoons I grew up watching. I just one day decided to put a drawing on a, you know, a piece of paper at the age of five. And I think it was like a dragon or Bambi's mom because I was on a Disney high at that time. Mm -hmm. And just one one point in my life when I did an animation seminar, I wanted to make something move, and I did, and I was just awestruck by the VHS tape at the end where I saw my animation move, and I was like, you know what? I want to keep doing that because that felt good. And I know it's weird for me to say that now when it's it's like, John, you rarely animate. What the hell are you talking about? But you know, at, at that point, it's just a matter of time constraints because I'm so busy with review making my let's play channel brain scratch commentaries talking with you guys on podcasts mm-hmm. <laughs> not that i don't well, appreciate you have me here people don't really understand how time consuming animation is yes no they, they really don't and and i'm you know one thing i keep saying over and over again i i, I love people like gerard the completionist pro jared peanut butter gamer all that but the difference between them and myself they have a team I don't. <laughs> I am one guy that does everything. Editing, review making, script writing. It's all very time consuming. And if I can clone myself, then I'd probably be a shitty multiplicity sequel. But I would do it in a heartbeat if it means I can make cartoons while making reviews at the same time. Because I want to make more cartoons. It's just that I, at this point in my life, have to shut my channel down for like four weeks just to make a cartoon. And I don't want to do that. Just yet. Well, I'm kind of the same with uh, trying to make this webcomic, but while also doing all these videos, which they're very editing intensive. So, yes. Yeah, it's, it's really hard to balance that out. But uh, do you have any influences for your actual videos? Uh, well, I was a huge fan. I still am. I'm, well, I'm not a, like a huge Gaga fan of like James Rolfe, the angry video game nerd, but I'm an admirer of what he does. He was definitely a main inspiration and Doug Walker, nostalgia critic for the the comedic side in me. Mm. Um, nowadays, I've pretty much found my own little stick and I'm pretty comfortable with it because, you know, before then, everyone was trying to emulate nerd. Oh, yeah. He, and gets angry about everything. And then I just mellowed out. Now I just want to see if I can wreck a menu game or not. And people know me for that now. So I don't plan on ever striding away from that. If I do, I'm not myself or I've been replaced by a body snatcher. Mm-hmm. And you guys know where to find me because I have a P.O. box. 
So I'm pretty comfortable with where I am now as a really mellow guy that drinks a shitload of coffee. And I don't plan on changing anytime soon. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Mm -hmm. All (laughs) over uh, my influences since I can bring that up. Yeah, it's pretty much the same. Like, I think everyone was inspired by Angry Video Game Nerd and Nostalgic Critics since they were the first popular ones. Yes. But but I also have um, uh, the Plinkett reviews, the Star Wars Episode 1 reviews. Since uh, they were actually more informative. Yeah, they also had like just editing. Like it wasn't just like person talking while the footage plays. It was like a more, I don't know, it felt more like a documentary than a review, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it did. Yeah, which is what I try to do. Have you seen Plinkett, Johnny? I have not. Damn. Ooh, you should. Yeah. They're... It's really, it's a time sink. It's good for background noise. Yeah. Oh, it's like an... I'm all about that background noise. Yeah. Oh, then, like... then yeah. Hook up the Star Wars prequels reviews, then you'll be it'll that'll give you a good few hours of time. Yeah, it, it opens with Star Wars: The Phantom Menace was the most disappointing thing since my son. I mean, how much more could you possibly fuck up the entire backstory to Star Wars? And while my son eventually hanged himself in the bathroom of the gas station, the unfortunate reality of the Star Wars prequels is that they'll be around forever. They will never go away. There could never be undone. <laughs> I mean, it's 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 really good. I think it's like probably some of the best criticism in I don't know when it if came they, out. Like even big critics were like, "Holy shit, this guy like just destroyed it." I don't know if Plinkett. I do know a Red Letter Media though. That's yeah, the same guy. Same same yeah, people. Yeah, okay. Same YouTube channel. But I remember when um, th- these videos came out, um, like Roger Ebert said, the- this is the only review that deserves to be broadcasted in a theater. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He was – the thing, he never – when Ebert was alive, he was really supportive of the new YouTube stuff going on, which a lot of the critics now who like who work for newspapers and stuff aren't. And I'm curious if he had lived what he would have thought of – what people are doing at this point, but I guess we'll never know. So, no. yeah. So, is that all the questions? Would you like to answer one more, maybe? Or let me. You know, I'll give a quick refresh. By the way, I was gonna say it was um, with the red letter media stuff, like that. Those reviews are almost like really good, um, like one on one, how to make a film or how to tell a story. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. if you just take out the rape jokes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you take out all the parts where, you, where he's like a serial killer, sure. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It, it, it quickly <laughs> becomes like a really good, like, free resource on how to tell a story. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I feel like when uh, the uh, Star Wars The Force Awakens came out, like, it feels like they, they saw the Plinkett reviews and took a lot of notes. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I think they did. Yeah. Well, he actually has a line in his review of – in. The Plinkett review of uh, Star Trek 2009 Mm -hmm. that he said uh, uh, J.J. Abrams should have been directing the prequels and George Lucas should have been directing people to their seats. (laughs) (laughs) Because before Force Awakens, I was like, I'll rewatch Plinkett's uh, Star Trek for Star Trek review. I was like, holy shit. He like called the J.J. Abrams thing like way back in 2009. Like that's kind of crazy if you think about it. Wow. From Raymond Latour. Pan, how mad are you at Johnny for not bringing you and I'm sorry for not being here sooner, cheesecake, lol. Cheesecake? I didn't know there was going to be cheesecake. What the fuck? Hey, do you, you like cheesecake? I can get you cheesecake. Everyone loves cheesecake. I like cheesecake. Cheesecake. I'm not a big fan. Uh, monster. What the fuck? Get a monster. So, cheesecake factory. <laughs> I, I should try making a cheesecake, though. I do like baking things. Just go so. to Cheesecake Factory. That's also good. Order the um, orange chicken. That's what I get. Orange chicken. Yes. Nice. Yes. <laughs> just, just, a, just a very sensual whisper of orange chicken. Cheese. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, I can imagine you at the table after you've ordered it and just, like, whispering to the chicken, like, it's just you and me here all alone. Ignore that lady watching me talk to you. Well, I'm just like a waiter. Who says, I recommend the orange chicken. <laughs> Go, sir, I'm sorry. What did you say? I couldn't hear you. <laughs> chicken. What? I think you. I think he wants a tip. <laughs> <laughs> Do we tip him in orange chicken? 
<laughs> okay, so the next video is going to be a Powerpuff Girls review. And Johnny, do you have any upcoming videos? Oh, well, right now I am at my rope's end with the Mother Marathon over at Some Call Me Johnny. I, I've already reviewed uh, Earthbound Beginnings or Mother 1 or uh, Earthbound, known as Mother 2. And I'm ending it with uh, Mother 3, which was never officially released here in the United States. So I'm looking at an English translated uh you know, Dub. bootleg, I guess you could say. <laughs> uh, but uh, it's the only way I'm going to play the game now. And I've been hearing good things because I had a, I had a few complaints about Earthbound, and a lot of people were saying that, you know, pretty much everything you bitched about, Mother Three fixes. So <laughs> okay, that's good. I'm looking forward to it. But that's the next video I'm working on right now. I'm planning on having that done within the next week. So yeah. hope you guys look forward to that. Yeah. I'm I am looking forward to it for sure. Oh, so, I appreciate it. So far, you've have you played it yet? No. Okay. Well, thanks for nothing. <laughs> I mean, an RPG takes forever. Like, that's going to take a lot of recording to do. Earthbound's not... The, I mean, I don't know about Earth, uh, of Mother 3, but, like, Earthbound wasn't really that long of an RPG, to be honest. I think I played it in, like, two settings. That's pretty short for an RPG. But, yeah, so this is the end of the podcast. Who are you people? Uh, I was Jim. I was Nolan. I'm Pan. I was the... Uh, <laughs> Fuck. And Johnny. I'm some call me orange cheese. Game. Johnny, okay. that's him. <laughs> some call me Johnny. I have acid reflux. Goodbye, every pony. I hope it's not an ulcer. Don't say every pony ever again. Oh man. <laughs> Play us out, Emily and Stephanie. I'll sing us out. Yeah. You are. My fire, the one desire. Believe when I say I want it that way. But we are two worlds apart. Can't reach to your heart. When you say that, that I, I want, want it, it that way, way. tell me why ain't, ain't nothing, nothing but, but a heartache. Tell me why ain't, ain't nothing but, but a mistake. Tell me why I never wanna hear you say I want it that way. Am I your fire, your one desire. Yes, I know it's too late, but I want it that way. Tell me why ain't, ain't nothing but a heartache. Tell me why ain't nothing but a mistake. Tell me why I never, never want to hear you say